It's the final free shirt Friday of the 2012 season. Everybody getting that gorgeous looking t-shirt. There's going to be a lot of gold in the seats tonight at PNC Park as the Bucks open a three game weekend set with the Central Division champion Reds. Other folks coming dressed in different ways to express their loyalty to the Pirates. And it's good to see Andrew McCutcheon back in the lineup. He had to leave yesterday's game in New York against the Mets after banging up his left knee, diving for a fly ball. But McCutcheon still chasing the National League batting crown back in the lineup and still chasing his 17th victory is right hander A.J. Burnett as he looks for his fourth win against Cincinnati this year. For Cincinnati, this is how they'll line up in the order they'll come to the plate. Brandon Phillips, the second baseman, leads off. Phillips getting 281 with an eight, 18 home runs, and he's done a, a super job. 51 multi hit games. He is uh, a flashy player, but he gets it done. Zach Kozart, Joey Votto, Todd Frazier, Jay Bruce, and Scott Rowland, the veteran at third base. The speedy Drew Stubbs in center, Hannigan catching. Homer Bailey doing the pitching, batting ninth against AJ. AJ Burnett making start number 30. This is the sixth year he has had at least 30 starts. The numbers brought to you by the Western PA Chevy dealers. He has been very good, as Tim was mentioning, especially against Cincinnati, three and one. A lot of those starts against Homer Bailey. One last time out against Cincinnati. Excuse me, against Houston. In a while between wins. August the 16th, but pitched well enough to win some of those games, by the way. And the guys who hope to help AJ get it done tonight defensively in the outfield. Alex Presley is in left field. Adam McCutcheon back out there in center. Jose Tabla gets the start in right tonight. Alvarez at third, Barnes at short. Jordy Mercer filling in for Neil Walker at second base. Jones at first, and Rod Barajas, the regular battery mate of AJ Burnett. Jordy Mercer, who Made the start yesterday at shortstop in New York. Had a couple of hits. He scored a run. Walked in the ninth inning and came in on Alex Presley's home run. And Neil Walker said he has been agonizing over this situation. He's been losing sleep over this. He does. He knows how important getting to 500 is for Pittsburgh fans. Being one himself growing up, and he does. Uh, he really, really had a hard time and took his time making this decision, but the herniated discs he's got are just preventing him from running the way that he needs to run, the way he needs to play. And so the decision was made for Neil to shut it down for this year and start resting and getting ready for 2013. Game underway is the first pitch to Phillips, misses outside for ball one. Not the most popular player to come into PNC Park this year. But as you said, Tim, he is a good Major League Baseball player. But wouldn't it be nice to have a nice homestand? These, these loyal fans, and there's going to be a, a better than I expected crowd in this ballpark tonight. I didn't know what to expect, but uh, they have been coming out all summer. And we'd really love to see the Pirates give him a good finish these last six games. 2 0 pitch, and Phillips slides it to the gap in left center field. Over to cut it off is Presley, and he will hold Phillips to a leadoff single. Rivers Casino tips to win. What needs to happen tonight? Well, finish like pros. You know, the, the Pirates uh, really are playing out the last six games, but you want them to play like major leaguers. So. Uh, they owe that to the fans themselves in this organization. I expect them fully to do that. Have a big finish for AJ. Let him have a, a good night tonight and possibly again Wednesday. And again, this uh, large oil crowd, it's going to be a, a good crowd in this ballpark. They deserve a good effort. They deserve some wins in this last homestand. Zach Kozart, the hitter, the shortstop with Phillips at first base. Pitches in for a strike. Zach Kozart, a 246 hitter. 15 home runs on the year for Cincinnati. And they've been playing well, winning some one run games. Still could have the best record going into the playoffs. The Washington Nationals they have a chance for that. The Nationals are game ahead of them. 60, rather 95 and 61 are the Nationals heading into tonight's activity. 
the Reds 94 and 62. Yeah, and you, you kind of walk a thin line when you've uh, uh, really clinched a division. And uh, you know you're going to be in postseason play. Do you rest the guys a lot? Do you play them a lot? Do you worry about them getting rusty? Do you worry about an injury perhaps happening? Talking to Chris Spire, he said he's going to pick his spots, and Dusty will be back uh, for the St. Louis series. And again, it's not that far off. But uh, well, we figure what 10, 10, 12, almost two weeks uh, will transpire between the time they clinched and the time they start postseason play. Kozar checks his swing. Phillips heading down to second base, and he'll make it without a throw. A runner at second base, and nobody out. Phillips goes down there on a wild pitch. Number 10 thrown by AJ, the breaking ball. Change up the signs with the runner at second base. Nobody out top of the first. Cozart has had a terrific year at the plate. He is a candidate for National League Rookie of the Year and a pretty solid one. Takes outside. One ball, two strike count to Cozart. Has hit in four straight. And there's some talk whether or not this would be AJ's last start. You know, he's due to come up on the last day of the season against the Atlanta Braves Wednesday afternoon. Well, you wonder if he wins this one would take him to 17. Would they give him a chance because he wins tonight to add to that total? One two pinch. Well, tip and Ross can't hang on, so Kozar will get another pitch. Well, I asked Clint Hurdle specifically this afternoon. Will AJ pitch another game after tonight? He's, I know he's scheduled to go Wednesday. Or Going to keep him in there Wednesday. He said, "Yeah, he, oh. said he is going." Oh, okay, done deal. Then. So he will get a chance for 18 if he can win tonight. But 18 is his career high. Well, if he doesn't win tonight, he's going to get a chance for 17. That's right. Uh, Wednesday. So yeah, he'll finish it up. I started to think, you know, with the season the way it's ending, maybe somebody else gets a shot on the last day. But it's going to be AJ Burnett against Chipper Jones and the Braves. And your last chance to see Chipper Jones in person as a player. Who will be during the series with the Braves Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday afternoon? What a career he has had. And for him, his final season gets extended as the Braves are going to the postseason as a wild card. That's great, then. That, that's a great kind of frosting on the cake for Chipper Jones. Well deserved. Ozart looks at it outside. Count is even two balls and two strikes. Cozart's only one of four red shortstops with at least 30 doubles and 15 homers in a season. Eddie Miller, Felipe Lopez, and the much beloved Barry Larkin in Cincinnati. And strikeout yeah, candidate. Barry Larkin, Hall of Famer. Yep, 109 strikeouts for Cozart. So he is uh, a candidate for sure. See if he sees the breaking ball again. 2 2 pitch. Missed inside the count full three balls and two strikes. Phillips had the leadoff base hit to left center. He's at second base. Cozart at the plate with a full count, and Joey Votto is lurking in the on deck circle. Votto hitting 340, but he will fall short of the number of plate appearances needed to qualify for the batting title due to the number of games he missed this season. 3 2. And this one to left field. Here comes Presley. He won't make the catch. He'll have to play it on a hop. Held at third is Phillips. Nobody out. Runners at the corners. Two base hits to start the ball game for Cincinnati. Very good at bat for the shortstop of the Reds. Zach Kozar worked A.J. Burnett to this point and then dropped it in front of Alex Presley in left field. And Mark Berry will hold Phillips up. Nothing to risk here with nobody out. And you got your big bopper coming up. No place to put him. Runner at first base. Reds are in business. Third base coach Mark Barry threw up the stop sign, and Phillips was heading around third with intentions of coming home. As you should. Get there hard. Make the third base coach stop it. Joey Votto facing A.J. Burnett. Reds threatening in the top of the first inning. 
Barajas with the block. Nobody going anywhere. Ball one. Lotto was named to his third All Star team this year. And after this plate appearance, he needs 50 more. And he won't get that with no. five games remaining after tonight. Unless there's a lot of extra inning gonna, games this week. I was going to say, uh, let's not invite him to get a lot of at bats this weekend either. Ready for the 1 0 pitch is Votto. Burnett deals him inside for ball two. Runners in scoring position. Votto hitting 371. Missed a lot of time, but the Reds didn't miss a beat with him out of the lineup. You know, that was uncanny, though, Steve, because when he was out of the lineup, that's when they got hot. I know. Now it's 3 0. Not the start that AJ was envisioning. Chris Spire, the interim manager until Dusty gets back starting Monday. 3 0 pitch in for a strike call. Yeah, Dusty Baker having some health challenges. Yeah, mini stroke uh, and uh, talking to Chris Spire that Dusty got a, a clean bill of health, uh, some final tests. After the stroke, and joined the uh, club in St. Louis for the last three games. Originally, was being checked out for an irregular heartbeat. And Bono fouls it off, and the count full, three and two. Well, we'll see if Cozart stays put or not. Nobody out. Runners at the corners. And Joey Votto with a three-ball, two-strike count. AJ Burnett. Right here would be glad to trade a double play for a run. Mm -hmm. Votto has struck out 80 times, somewhat of a candidate, but he is one tough customer. Payoff pitch from Burnett. There goes the runner, and that's high ball four, and AJ's walked the bases full here. Two base hits and a walk, and the bases are loaded with nobody out, and the Reds are threatening to put together a very big inning in the top of the first. Not the game plan that AJ drew up this afternoon. Yeah, and uh, here's one of these situations, and Burnett's been in these a lot where you think in damage control now. Let's see what I can uh, do in terms of minimizing the damage here in the top of the first inning. It's almost like a, a microcosm of a season. You want to exercise damage control, like the Pirates were 16 games over 500. You know you're not going to stay at that pace, but try to have a balance when that kind of a streak or that hot streak goes. Where you don't just fall into a cave. Uh, you know, maybe play some 500 ball. You get in this situation, bases loaded, you can live with two runs out of this. One run is great, none is a miracle. Todd Frazier takes outside ball one. Brandon Phillips, a leadoff single, is at third base. A follow up single by Cozart, he's at second. And then the walk to Joey Votto has put him at first. Put a one hopper back to AJ. Be nice. Go to one, two, three. Easy as one, two, three. Had one of those recently. One zero pitch. Outside again, and Burnett falling behind, and really can't afford to with nobody out in the bases full. Hmm. The hole is getting deeper. The shovel <laughs> is making the hole deeper. Frazier was National League Rookie of the Month for August. He hit 330 with six home runs and 25 RBIs in August. Follows this one back, two and one. He certainly is a candidate for Rookie of the Year. He and his teammate Zach Cozart will be in the running for that together. Another Cincinnati Red with over 100 strikeouts inside his resume. Strikeouts up all around baseball this year. 2 1 pitch. And missed outside, and it's a three ball, one strike count. AJ Burnett needs a strike here, and Frazier knows it. And Frazier will be looking for the fastball. Will he get it? AJ's been around long enough to know that the hitter will be looking for that. 3 1. Swing and a miss. 3 and 2. Not just a fastball, fastball in a real good spot. Take the count full. 
See Barajas on the outside part of the plate. It was just off that corner. That's a borderline pitch. It's a whack at it. Comes up empty. AJ could deliver a very, very important pitch right here if he can get this ball by the batter. Here is the payoff. Up in the air to right field. Tom it underneath it. Phillips going to tag at third. And the throw comes into the cutoff man Jones. The Reds will have a one nothing lead. And as Phillips scores on the sacrifice fly to right by Todd Frazier, his 66th RBI. Just far enough, and Brandon Phillips has great speed. You didn't have to get it too far out into right field. It was kind of a no brainer. He was going to score, and they get the extra 90 feet from second to third. Still in business, but now ground ball could get you out of this with minimal damage. Well, Jay Bruce hasn't grounded into very many double plays this year. Only four the entire season and 540 at bats. He usually hits the ball up in the air somewhere. Yeah, got that uppercut swing. One run is in, one out. Runners at first and third, and Burnett dealing to Jay Bruce. And there's a ground ball to second. Mercer. There's Barnes, and that's two. And AJ limits the damage thanks to the double play to just one run. Gets out of a bases loaded, no out jam. One nothing Reds after half inning. As the Reds had the bases loaded, nobody out. And managed to get just one run only. Pirates lineup brought to you by Toyota. Cody Mercer batting after Presley. Six hits in his last 15 at bats. He hopes to keep it going. Andrew McCutcheon looking for a few hits after a couple of offers in New York. Garrett Jones, Jose Tom with a Pedro Alvarez, Clint Barnes, Rob Rahas bats eighth, AJ Burnett bats ninth. On the hill for Cincinnati, he's a tough right hander, Homer Bailey. One of the great all time. Names for a pitcher, Homer. His numbers on the year. He has one complete game. Guess who it's against? He has two in his career. Guess who they're against? But he has run into AJ Burnett three previous times, and AJ has won that battle. Behind Bailey in the field. Left fielder is Todd Frazier, Drew Stubbs, and then Jay Bruce, who hit into that inning ending double play. Scott Rowland at third base, Zach Cozart the shortstop, Brandon Phillips at second, Votto at first, and Ryan Hannigan doing the catching tonight. And Scott Rowland, who is a veteran, a couple of years ago, and he was acquired at the deadline. The Reds were in the basement, and uh, Rowland was picked up from Toronto. People were scratching their heads at the move, but it was for the following year in which they would win the Central Division title. And Rowland was a big part of that, so the Reds were looking ahead when they acquired Rowland. The ultimate professional, he is. A very steady member of this ball club. They think a lot of them, uh, people have used the phrase heart and soul of the Cincinnati Reds. Since acquiring them, they've won two division titles in three years. Presley to the right side. Phillips will wait for Vaughn to get there. And throws out Alex. One out. 
Brandon Phillips routine play. He'll make some routine plays that don't look routine. When you watch him play enough, you'll see it. And uh, likes the likes the mustard. Mm -hmm. Here's Jordy Mercer. A chance to play second base tonight. 220 hitter. Does have a home run. Five runs batted in and yesterday against the Mets. Went two for three with a walk and a run scored. Also had an RBI. Nothing in one to Jordy. A one pitch. Mercer's now nothing in two. Homer Bailey out of LaGrange, Texas, 6'3, 225. Seventh player taken overall in the 2004 draft. First time in double figure wins for Homer Bailey. Last year he had nine. 12 so far this year. Well, think about this. He has been very, very consistent and has stayed relatively healthy. He's 26. This is his 110th career start tonight. One ball and two strikes to Mercer. And he strikes out. First strikeout for Bailey tonight. Center fielder, number 22, Andrew McCutcheon. Here is Andrew McCutcheon who finds himself a point behind Buster Posey of San Francisco in the race for the National League batting crown. Looking for some hits. Got to be the theme of the weekend for Pirate fans, for sure. Kutch takes a ball. Cutchin yesterday couldn't get a hit. Went 0 for 3, went 0 for 4 the day before that. One ball and one strike to Cutch. He's a team at average. Hits. He's a league in hits. 190. He's down on the count. A ball and two strikes. Homer Bailey has given up 26 home runs and McCutcheon has 30. Two balls and two strikes. Good take on a big sweeping breaking ball. Hard pitch to take when you got two strikes. Bailey was trying to induce the strikeout, but didn't happen there. And Andrew with a bat on the shoulder. That's a setup, and it'll rise like that. Count is full. Better has a little routine. He starts with a bat laying on the shoulder, and then just as the pitcher starts to wind up, he lifts it up, getting in that launch mode. Two outs, base is empty, and Homer Bailey delivering the payoff pitch. McCutcheon, ground ball to third, Olin charging. He throws, and he got McCutcheon. One, two, three, go the Bucks in the bottom of the first. We'll head to the second at PNC Park. It's the Reds one, Pirates nothing.
Pirates scoreboard crew here at PNC Park. Also the grandson of former Pirates GM Joe O'Toole. His beloved Buckos were in his blood, and he is being remembered tonight by his crew members and uh, his tripod down on the camera well. Also wearing a ribbon and Greg Brown in the radio booth tonight displaying his ribbon in honor of Derek O'Toole. He will be missed. He was grandfather very well, Joe, former general manager of the Pirates. Joe O'Toole did everything you could possibly imagine coming up through the ranks with the Pittsburgh Pirate organization. Roland drops him into right field for a base hit. Derek O'Toole was honored prior to the game with a moment of silence. And a very well, well liked member of the crew here at PNC Park. Seen with Bill Mazeroski and, and the Pirates, a uh, big part of his life. And again, recently lost his life, and everybody around the Pirates organization saddened by that. And, and a period of mourning for, for Derek. of the scoreboard crew and with the ribbons on tonight. A popular member of the crew around this ballpark. Spent a lot of time with his grandparents, Joe and Betty, great members of the Pirate family. Derek O'Toole with that uh, same approach to life that Symbolic of members of his family, his folks, his grandfolks, grandparents. No balls and two strikes to Drew Stubbs. That's one and two. The Reds with a one nothing lead. Phillips had a leadoff single in the first. And came around on a sacrifice fly by Todd Frazier. An inning ending double play hit into by Jay Bruce. A rare one for Bruce. Helped out Burnett and the Bucks. Just his fifth, I think, and this is fifth. Hundreds and hundreds of at bats over 400, I think, for Jay. 541. And Stubbs down on strikes. For one out. Jay Burnett gets the strikeout of Stubbs. The curve ball that he chases. 159th strikeout for Stubbs. And 173rd for AJ. He leads the staff. Dark sky tonight. Different looking. Well, here is Ryan Hannigan, the catcher, number eight hitter, batting with one out and one on. Two eighty two for Hannigan. He had split time this year with Devin Mezzarocco behind the plate. Mezzarocco from Punxsutawney. And also, Deanna Navarro turned out to be a pretty good pickup and had spent some time behind the plate later in the season. AJ still getting it to home plate, 93 miles an hour. 35 year old arm. Good fastball, good curve. A lot of experience. It's a good mix. Ground ball to second. Mercer to Barmas. Double play. Second one of as many innings to end the inning. With an inning and a half. It's a one nothing Reds lead.
Pirates Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. By your Toyota dealers. Life is all about the ride. See your Western Pennsylvania Toyota dealers today for a great car with a great deal. And by Day Automotive, we're going to make your day. Let's go Bucks. Well, that is one of the best-selling signs of the sign store. Yeah. Right there, Bob Walk for president, and the DH. And look at that great-looking likeness of him in the upper corner of that sign. Yeah. I would uh, I would vote for Bob. No, I voted for Lincoln. Why not vote for Bob? <laughs> Which Lincoln? <laughs> yeah, thumbs up. I thought Bob was going to have a quiet fall, but it looks like he's campaigning. Garrett Jones leads things off in the bottom of the second inning. One nothing Cincinnati. Homer Bailey delivering to Garrett Jones the 1-0 pitch. Bouncer to the right side that backs up Votto. And Bailey makes the catch and tag out. And Jones is gone and Bailey's retired four straight to start the ball game. Really Votto giving a little ground there, and he's taking a better hop, giving a good feed to Homer Bailey, doing his job, getting over there to cover first base. Bailey will face Jose Tabata. Tabata's playing time has been reduced, although he did come in yesterday when Andrew McCutcheon had his left knee banged up, finished up the ball game, had one turn at the plate. And he takes a strike there. Tabata went 0 for 1. He flat out deep to right field in the seventh inning. 0 1 pitch. It's nothing in two. Travis Snyder, who was in right field yesterday, made the catch of the year in baseball. Yeah, he's got some new hoodies. Looks like uh, yeah. very stylish, contemporary. Ground ball toward the middle, backhanded by Phillips. Takes his time, makes the throw, and there are two men out. Tune in for game analysis from the Steelers, Pitt, and WVU during press conference Tuesday. Hear from head coaches Mike Tomlin, Paul Christ, and Dana Holderson as they break down every game and preview the next one. Press conference Tuesday, every Tuesday starting at noon on Root Sports. Temperature is dipping. It's autumn. Get out the jackets, get out the hoodies. Pedro Alvarez swings and misses at strike one. What a year Pedro's had. And considering the peaks and valleys, especially some of the valleys, look at those numbers 30 homers, 85 runs batted in. Pretty much following the Pirates' year. Peaks, big valley. Well, you get 30 home runs, you're a proven run producer. Yep. Great to see him. Reach that plateau. He's going to be good for his confidence. Strikeouts are going to be there for every power hitter. Look at the numbers a year ago, Steve. Not even close. Four home runs. Yeah. Now we had spent time in AAA last year. The things weren't working out for him after the beginning of the season. A year that he knew he needed to improve on, and he has done just that, and then some. And Pedro down on strikes, and Homer Bailey with two strikeouts has now retired the first six Pirates he has faced in this ballgame.
Pirates by the score of one to nothing. Well, unfortunately, right now for the Pittsburgh Penguins, they're kind of mired in a bit of a dispute, but they're busy. They're getting after it, and they were here at PNC Park today. Pascal Dupuis, Matt Cook, Chris Kunitz, Joe Vitale, Matt Niskanen, and Tyler Kennedy. They went with balls and bats and gloves, and they had a little bit of fun taking a little P BP. Matt Cook with a natural stroke. So the Penguins, who are scheduled to open the season one week from today, hopefully that all works out. But in the meantime, they are staying busy on the ice down at South Point, and they had a little fun today here at PNC Park. Gentlemen, back to you. See the mayor, Sean Casey, involved in that as well. But yeah, the sides met today in New York. They agreed on some minor issues, but still no end to the lockout in sight. The regular season uh, openers in jeopardy. The preseason games have all been canceled. I hope they get that worked out soon. Homer Bailey up there. He takes a ball. Well, you know, this is not that far removed from when they wiped out an entire season. And it's tough for the fans. It's tough for the vendors. It's tough for the people who work for the clubs. And if everything gets together, all will be well. Will never pass him out. AJ with a backhanded play and flip to first base, and Jones will make the tag. Well done on both ends. AJ following through toward first base is able to reverse that, and get over to the ball, kind of threw it off balance, and that pulled Garrett off the bag. But he gets it done. You got a pitcher running the bases, so that helped the whole program. You'll see AJ heading over toward first base, so he gets it and then catches that flyer, but Garrett gets it done. It's cleaned up at first base. That's a one three put out with an exclamation point. Yeah. Actually AJ dressing it up a little bit. He had plenty of time to set himself with a pitcher running and make a better throw. He'd probably tell you he's been better served doing that but they got the out. Back to the top of the order and Brandon Phillips. Phillips with the leadoff single. He has scored the game's only run. Phillips has hit anywhere from first to fifth in the Reds order. He's a cleanup guy for a while. I don't know if you consider him a prototypical leadoff hitter. The number of home runs he's produced in RBIs. I don't know if you could consider him prototypical in any category. Not typical for sure in any category. He gets it done. He is very popular in Cincy. 2 0. Fouled off, and it's 2 and 1. The Reds with the National League Central Division crown this year. And it's not like they're just sitting back trying to set their rotation for the postseason. This is a team that still has a lot to play for. They want to get home field advantage throughout. And they are trailing the Washington Nationals by a game in that quest. The Nationals with the best record. We'll tap her down to third. Pedro one hands it, throws on the run, and he got him. Well, you, you, you temper that with the fact you don't want to get anybody hurt either. So you, you walk that line. Johnny Cueto, Cy Young candidate. Cueto will go Sunday in the series finale against Wandy Rodriguez. If you want to twirl your hair, he's got a lot to work with. Two outs, nobody on for the shortstop, Zach Cozart. And AJ gets in strike one. An important part of AJ's game after the first couple of innings, especially the first inning where he gave up two hits and then one hit in the second. It's get in strike one. It helps. Wasn't doing that early on. Did it with that curveball, kind of a backdoor curveball, catching that inside corner, comes right back to the same neighborhood. Six for 12 and first pitch strikes tonight. And that's something that he knows he needs to improve throughout the rest of the game. Nothing in two to Cozart. One ball and two strikes. Cozart singled and was stranded at third in the first inning when Jay Bruce hit into an inning ending double play. They've had inning ending double plays in the first and the second. Brian Hannigan doing the honors in the second inning for Cincinnati. It will not happen here in the third. Don't need to have it happen here. Tap a little bit wide of third base. Back to back curveballs. Mm. 
Harris got to make a play on that ball into the seat. Yeah. He? yeah, he does. I think he needs to go back to instructional league. I think he's yeah. Back to the salt and pepper league for season. Work on his fundamentals. Instructional league right around the corner, actually. Mm, just missing. Nice follow up to the two breaking balls trying to pick up that outside corner. See how close he came. Those resources strike zone showing just a bit outside. Two ball, two strike pitch. Kozart is two for two. Yeah, the curve ball in that hitting zone didn't get it out as far as he wanted to. Two out single. Breaking ball. Just about middle, middle. Yep. A good spot for Kozart to get the barrel of the bat on. One on and two out for Joey Votto. Who you would just as soon have leading off, but that's not the case. Votto Watt his first time up to load the bases with nobody out in the first inning. Takes a strike on the inside corner. Nothing and one to Votto. Joey leads the major leagues in on base percentage. 519 is on base percentage. Since he returned to the lineup on the 5th of September, he had a pair of arthroscopic surgeries on his left knee and was out from the 17th of July until the 3rd of September. Suffered the injury back at the end of June in San Francisco. As you said uh, earlier, Reds played very good baseball with him on the shelf. Jay going inside and backing up his Votto. April 289, big month of May. June was going along very well also until the end. Sure was. 392. It was his best month, and then he was injured against the Giants. Well, keep an eye on Kosark. Chance he'll be taken off. Two outs and the two ball, one strike pitch. Votto. Hot shot right to Barmas. He'll win the foot race to the bag and get the force out. No runs a hit, one left. So two and a half. Reds one, Pirates nothing. at bat12 app for your iPhone 
iPad, Android, BlackBerry, and Windows Mobile. Get live audio, pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit pirates.com for details. Well, almost got a hot dog in the booth. Last chance for the parrot. Made a good effort. Almost over in the radio booth. He's trying. He's trying, but he hasn't. Uh, he, he's got to get a spotter like you know, yeah, like the sniper has. Here. You know, yeah. somebody to determine the windage and the angle and all yep. that stuff. Yeah. Good effort. As he puts in every night. Yep. Clint Barmas leads off against Homer Bailey. Need a base runner. First six Pirates have gone down in order, and Bailey has struck out two of them. A one pitch. Side. And it's one and one to Clint Barmas. Barmas in his last 11 games at PNC Park, hitting 344. That's 11 out of 32. Round ball to third. And that's off the glove and rolling out of the left field. And Barmas is aboard. And Scott trying to take it on the backhand side in between hops. It's off the glove, and we do have a base runner. Error on Roland. Get a base runner any way you can take it right now, down one nothing. Time run on. AGH camp slows it down for you. He's made that play a lot of times in his career. Didn't happen right there. Barajas had a pretty good game swinging the bat yesterday at City Field in New York. Had a home run, a solo shot in the fourth inning. It was his 11th of the year. And he also had an RBI double in the second inning. Went two out of four in the game. Also almost had a chance to get another one to deep left center field in the eighth inning. Was caught. By the center fielder Andres Torres with his back up against the wall. And Ryan hits one high in the air down the left field line. It is going to hook and go foul. It'll be nice for Rod to finish up the season strongly in terms of the power department. Well, the catchers have been doing a pretty good job. Between Michael McHenry and Rod Barajas, 23 home runs combined. The only other National League teams to have more home runs from their catchers are Colorado with 32, Atlanta with 28, and Philly with 24. Bono's going to give this one a run. It's up into the seats, though. The home run production has not been a problem for the Pirates. A lot more than we would have ever expected coming out of spring training. Mark Strip matter. Catcher by trade, one of the Pirates coaches working with Michael McHenry on the bench. Focuses is working with the catchers. Here comes the one two, and Rod pops it up. Brandon Phillips will backpedal and makes the catch for the out. One gone. So one man out for AJ Burnett. He will now try to move Barmas into scoring position. Five sacrifice bunts for AJ. Four out of 60 on the season as a hitter. It's the Keystone Jolly Roger. And Burnett follows the first pitch off. Trying to bunt. The season ended right now. The Reds would play the Giants, and the Nationals would get the wild card game winner. That's how that would work if the season ended right now. And who would get to put out the fire in back of the batter's eye? <laughs> Manny Sanguina is cooking up some fire department some sandwiches out there right now. It's a ton of smoke. Well, Randall on the camera gets to enjoy the. I mean Rambo, I see. 
He's, he's just beside the, the smoke, yeah. but not missing by much. This one is put down foul. And AJ strikes out. Three on the ledger for Homer Bailey. In the game with 195 innings and 152 strikeouts. You mentioned Homer Bailey uh, been pretty healthy, but you look at his overall pro career, eight years in the pros, five times on the DL for shoulders and tweaks and knees and all kinds of things, but he's managed to pitch in and around that and get a bunch of starts. I think also, Steve, and I know you'll agree, this is a different day and age, a different time for pitchers in terms of how they're treated. They're treated on the, on the side of caution. Exactly. I mean, you know, how many times were you on the DL? Twice that I know of. How many that you didn't know of? <laughs> a lot of people thought I, I was on a mental DL. But twice, you know, that, that, that's that's probably reasonable. Yeah, you know, more years. than reasonable. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's that's not very many times to have to sit out. Well, there were two, you know, there, there, yeah, the, that that whole thing has changed. Economics has changed it to a certain degree. You want to protect your investments. You've got teams shutting down healthy pitchers yeah. just to protect them. Yeah, I, I, I still have a problem with Washington and Strasburg. Yeah, the strike is called to Presley. Well, and from the outside looking in, and again, we are on the outside looking in on that. It, it just does. You've got a team that's got the best record in the National League, a team that could go on and win a World Series, and one of your two best pitchers, you're not going to let yeah. pitch. And, and how much does he feel left out? I mean, he helped get it. Get them there. Who knows if they may ever get there again? Presley down the left field line, and that ball will be caught. Todd Frazier running it down. And the Pirates gone in the third inning. Head to inning number four, one nothing Cincinnati. Walker telling the press that he is not going to play again this season due to herniated discs in his back. Tried to, to play through it as much as I could. Um, my goal was to help this team as, as much as I could. And when I got back on the field, I, I did as, as much as I could. <laughs> and I'm sure people were probably raising eyebrows when I would play one day and not play for a few days. Um, but the fact of the matter is that um, rest is the biggest thing for this for the situation. So um, it's getting better. It is getting better. But uh, like I said, rest rest is important, and, and I, I, I won't play the rest of the season. So I'm I'm, I'm shut down. So Neil Walker shut down for the rest of the season, and Neil uh, 
you know, I talked to him in the clubhouse privately today about it, and he is he's agonized over this because he is a Pittsburgh kid. Well, he wants to play. He, uh, but he understands it's so close to 500, he gets it more than anybody else on that roster. He gets it, and he he feels worse than anybody because he just can't give it 100%. He can't make it go. And needs the rest right now, and, and he wants to be ready to attack it in 2013. Back injuries. Uh, can be so tricky and, and initially hard to diagnose, hard to treat, how to know when you're, be you're better enough uh, where you won't aggravate it enough and aggravate it anymore. Frazier to right field and tackle the over the shoulder catch, one out. Uh, we all know Neil Walker. Neil Walker wants to play all the time. Simple as that. I had a discussion with uh, Clint Hurdle about it the other day in New York and he was adamant. You know, he said, you know, we don't feel what Neil feels. So nobody knows what he's going through in terms of the pain and the and the discomfort. And the fact of the matter that he couldn't play has been killing him. He just didn't, he just doesn't want to, you know, not be in the lineup. He wants to be in the lineup every day, but there comes a point where, you know, how much help are you going to be if you know you can't give it what you know is necessary to give every night? So the uh, L4 and L5 vertebrae are herniated. That no surgery will be required. That was something that was asked of him today. He said as long as he takes care of what he's supposed to take care of and he continues to get the necessary rest and does the necessary work in the right way, takes care of himself the way that he's supposed to, there will be no surgery for him. Well, that's, uh, that's good news. You want Cut anytime you don't have to. And it's not and just. And the technology is, is incredible now, so they obviously found something that they said would be helped by rest without having to get involved with surgery. We did say it's not just swinging the bat, it's it's running. The running part, we've seen him try to run. He went, he had the last homestand, first and third situation against Milwaukee. It just did not look comfortable at all and was thrown out by a long way, and it just you could tell he wasn't right. And he said it's the running and it's the being on the field and, and all the stuff you have to do on the field for three and a half hours at a time. Hey Bruce down on strikes two away. So it is a big deal. But you know he wanted to make it extremely clear that he tried and he kind of stretched it out as long as he possibly could before the decision was made to, to shut it down today. That could not have been much fun when he addressed the media and made that announcement for him. Again, he more than any player understands what's going on record wise, what's going on with this team, and he wants to be a key cog in changing things around. Mercer throws to first, and safe is rolling. Chris Conroy, the first base umpire, hearing it from the fans. And the old timer got down the base pass. And Got the safe call. Hit the ball hard. Ball smoke on the short hop to Mercer. Good pursuit by Jordy as he makes a good effort to clean it up. Don't quite get him. He's ready. Got the fist with the out. Well, he scored a base hit for Roland. He's two for two. This one gets away from Barajas. He'll throw down to second base and Rollins out. Barajas throws out Roland. And the Reds are finished in the fourth.
City of Pittsburgh. One nothing Reds leading the Pirates in game one of this three game weekend set. We go to the fourth inning time to take a look at our AT&T mobility trivia question. The Reds are the third team in Major League history to have six pitchers with 113 or more strikeouts. Who are the other two teams? Look at that. Well, one of them has to be Arizona with uh, Schilling, Randy Johnson, and somebody else. Is that your final answer? Uh, there, there's your city under a full moon. Portrait. Pittsburgh portrait. Still the best view in all of baseball. Reds are just the third team, so other two other teams. She's giving me the code sign for Arizona. She gave you the uh, Diamondback sign. Yep. And uh, oh. hmm. Baltimore, 1971. Probably both wrong, but got the answers out pretty quickly, I thought. I can tell you at least one of them's wrong. I do know it wasn't Baltimore. Mercer ground ball to Cozart. It's short. One out for the Pirates. Mercer's 0 for 2. But you know, as far as uh, Baltimore is concerned, you know that team pretty well. Faced them in the World Series. I thought. Well, Barrel Automotive League leader stat. Highest batting average when behind in the count in baseball. Andrew McCutcheon hitting 332. Of course, Melky Cabrera is suspended for the rest of the season. The Giants will not use him in the postseason. Barrel Automotive driven to be better. Koch looking for his first hit in three games. Comes into action tonight, trailing Buster Posey of the Giants by a point. And now is behind him by two points. Hot homestand. Well, he's behind in the count now, so should be perfectly positioned. Time for a hit. Ball one strike to McCutcheon. Mm -hmm. He's tried that breaking ball before and he took it. Perfecto. That's a perfect. One and two to Kutch. Coming outside. I'll tell you, Bailey missed there, but he threw it right exactly where Hannigan wanted it to see if Andrew would chase. So Hannigan wants this pitch down and away. Pretty much in that neighborhood. The count goes full. Full count to Andrew McCutcheon. A lot of those jerseys around the ballpark. A lot of shirts with his name on. Here comes the payoff pitch from Homer Bailey. Fastball away. And oh. strikes out. That's a perfecter. He he threw Andrew some pitches in that at bat. The breaking ball for strike two, and then the fastball. This is absolutely perfect delivery. Right exactly where Hannigan wanted it. You have to tip your cap to the pitcher on that one. Is 0 for 2. Yeah. Andrew was in a tough spot, couldn't take it, had to swing at a pitch that he knew he couldn't do much with. Bailey to face Garrett Jones with the bases empty and two gone. Jones will take a strike. Jay Burnett facing a Reds team tonight that's won 94 games. It's the 11th time they've won 94 games. And the first time they've done it since 1999. 32 games over 500 at 94 and 62. They haven't been more than 32 games over 500 since the Big Red Machine days. 1976 World Series champions finished. 42 over 500 at 102 and 60. So this Reds team is in rare air. 0 and 2 to Garrett Jones. 
one ball two strikes. And this is a Cincinnati team too that lost their closer early. And uh, really had to. Convince everybody that Aroldis Chapman could be a closer. I mean they they strongly wanted him to start. And uh, the yeah, decision was finally made to have him close. Are you convinced now? Yeah, everybody's convinced now, but they weren't before. Yeah, that was a big item for them because they did lose their closer early. Jones strikes out, and for the third time in four innings, Homer Bailey has a one, two, three inning. And a four, one nothing Cincinnati. is brought to you by Barrel Automotive. We're driven to be better. By PNC Bank, for the achiever in you. And by Chevy Cruze, which offers EPA estimated 42 MPG highway. Let's go box. Just a postcard. Great backdrop here from the North Shore looking over to downtown across the Allegheny River. Clipper fleet in action tonight. Oh, all you got was the T-shirt. Are you kidding? It's a free shirt Friday. You should be happy with that. That's a you got a Major League Baseball game too, yeah. by the way. I mean, he went all out tonight. <laughs> That's definitely an anniversary present. She should remember. Got the glove ready. One out of Drew Stumps. Bouncing ball to Barmas. Goes on the run. He got him. And one out for the Reds. Top of the fifth inning. Brian Hannigan is 0 for 1. Hit into an inning ending double play in the second inning. And by the way, after this half inning, it would be nice for the Pirates to get a base hit against Mr. Bailey. We don't mind. I think he's ordering one up to be delivered. She says, Dad, pay attention to the game. Yeah, Pirates do need to get a hit. They need to get that zero off the board. They don't want to let Homer Bailey here at PNC Park in front of a great crowd tonight. Go too deep with one of those. Yep. AJ Burnett has cleaned everything up after a very workmanlike top of the first inning where it looked like it could have gotten away. And we talked about damage control, and that was a great example of it. Bases loaded, nobody out, and one run scoring. Steve, these two teams have played each other a lot. A lot of folks have seen these two teams play over the years. The Pirates with a 1,042 and 1,006 record against the Reds. It's been a great rivalry. Decade of the 70s. There's uh, a lot of Reds, a lot of Pittsburgh Pirates in postseason play, a lot of good action. Big Red Machine, Lumber Company. 
Like good baseball. High level baseball. One and two. To the left side, Alvarez. Speed makes the throw, and Hannigan is out. Well, this Sunday is Fan Appreciation Day at PNC Park. The Bucks hosting the Reds at 135. Make sure you're here so the Bucks can thank you, the fans, all game long. Great prizes will be given away during each inning break, including the chance to win a game-worn jersey right off a player's back. Plus, meet your favorite players in the games before the game. For tickets, go to Pirates.com. Fan Appreciation Day on Sunday. Be here. And if you happen to be sitting under the radio booth, you might get a bonus during the seventh inning stretch. <laughs> Mr. Glass uh, yeah. has his throngs of, of admirers. They look up to him and he throws them <laughs> gifts. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun every Sunday afternoon, and it's going to be even more fun. A lot of people out and prizes all over the place. Good time. Two outs in the 0 1 to Homer Bailey is in there for a strike, nothing in two. No balls and two strikes. Yeah, it's like you, you take care of your people. You show up. Well, I can only throw so far. Well, <laughs> it's the same section. It's, a, it's become a lot of fun. To find the youngsters and get certain things to the young kids down below. Well, I always enjoy it when you're finished. And then the last thing you throw out is the plastic bag that everything came in. Well, yeah, because now it's time to concentrate on the game. That's the kind of the finale. That's the signature that, okay, it's over. Let's go back and see where the Pirates are. Yeah, well, I'll bet you somebody takes that home. Steve Blast threw me a place to plastic, plastic bag. bag. <laughs> yeah, it's a highlight. Bailey strikes out. Burnett takes care of him. Reds gone in order in the fifth, and the Pirates looking for a hit. An 11 pitch inning for A.J. Burnett. It's 1 0 Cincinnati. Cross and trying to change that now in the bottom of the fifth inning. Our AT&T Mobility trivia question tonight has to do with Cincinnati Reds. They are the third team in Major League history to have six pitchers with 113 or more strikeouts. Who are the other two teams to do it? The 1999 Houston Astros, the last ones to do it, and the 1993 Los Angeles Dodgers. Steve, you went over two again. And uh, get well, Dusty Baker. Dusty yeah. is still out after having a mild stroke. He is getting well, and he'll join the Reds when they take on the St. Louis Cardinals coming up Monday. He'll be back. Good man. 
Jose Tomlin will lead off for the Pirates in the fifth inning. He grounded out to the second baseman Brandon Phillips back in the second. Strike one to Jose. One base runner for the Pirates so far. The error charge to Scott Rowan. Ball hit by Barmas in the third. That's been it. No balls and two strikes. Misty Baker has missed the last eight games and he is expected to join the team Monday in St. Louis. And while Chris Spire has been manning the red ship, they are five and three. Chris Spire has been around a long, long time. Good baseball man. I think, was it his son, Justin Spire, a pitcher? A good pitcher? Pitched a lot against Chris Spire. Pitched against him in the playoffs one year. He was with the Giants. Tough competitor. Mm -hmm. 0 2 to Jose. Time what it takes outside. I've been visiting with Chris. And we always remember uh, the first time we faced the Giants in 1972, I hit him right in the ribs. So, what was that all about? I said, the home run you hit off me in the playoffs a year before. <laughs> True story. <laughs> we laugh about it now. I don't think we laughed too much back in the day. So, you didn't tell him it just got out, out, of, uh, out of your hand? I no, I just I, got away from I you. I said, home run you hit off me in the playoffs. Didn't really make much sense from my standpoint. <laughs> Probably wouldn't do it again if I gave it a lot of thought, but I did it. Pete Rose taught me how to own up to that kind of stuff once when I tried to bluff him, telling him a ball got away from me. He said, Who are you trying to kid? And he said it in a different kind of language. One to a high bouncer, Bailey fields it and throws out Tyler. Good play by Homer Bailey in that he didn't rush anything, didn't panic, knew he had time or felt he had time. So no panic throw. Every once in a while you see a, a pitcher panic waiting for this ball. It seems like an hour before that ball will come down. Sometimes you can get really antsy and throw that ball up into section 13 or wherever it is. Handle it well. Section 12, I'm sorry. Yep. You know what? Got that information from the truck, and you know what? They're right. I thought it was 103. That's you get in section 103. Huh? You're getting, you're throwing that ball away. Well, I think yeah, but I think section section 108 is just beyond the visitors' dugout. Okay. Yeah, 103 is down there, right? That's where our set is. For yeah. You got square. Anyway, he threw it to the first base. One ball, one strike to Pedro. Well, the bad news, we don't have a hit yet. The good news, one swing of the bat, we can get our first hit and tie the ball game up. Again, uh, Bailey has given up 26 home runs in his 31 previous starts. Pedro lets that one go by, and it's one and two. Pirates have homered 19 times in the last 17 games. They're fourth in the NL with 166 home runs. The most since the 2000 season when the Pirates had 168. And for Pedro, pretty interesting the fact that he has had at least four RBIs in a game on seven occasions this year. The only other big league player to do that. Josh Hamilton of the Texas Ranger. Ones have shifted with Kozar playing up the middle, rolling all alone on the left side. Two ball, two strike pitch from Bailey. Swing and a miss, and Alvarez is down on strikes for the second time tonight. Number six for Homer. Once again, check out where Hannigan has the target. Wants to go upstairs, goes upstairs. That's it. Homer Bailey has made some serious pitches in terms of. So yeah, you see the the target up there. He he has followed the glove of Ryan Hannigan repeatedly. Six strikeouts, no free passes. And Barmus is the only pirate to reach base tonight. He did it on an error by third baseman Scott Rowland to lead off the third. Two. 
1 0 pitch to Barmas. Now the count even a ball and a strike. Homer Bailey walked five Houston Astros in the previous start. That's the highest he's been. His control has been quite good coming into the game again. 31 starts, 51 walks. It's very good. Three to one strikeout to ball ratio. Three, three to one strikeouts to walks. They thought highly enough of him to draft him seventh overall in the 2004 draft. Homer Bailey tonight is the third Reds pitcher to eclipse the 200 inning mark. By the way, his real name, given name, is David. And the Reds are going to have four guys over 200 innings. Bronson Royal has 197. So they've been remarkably we'll healthy that. as a rotation. Well, remarkably they, healthy. They primarily just use five players. They did use a sixth pitcher at one point. Because they had a double header situation. Six started. Yeah. That was it. That's big. You, know, you, you, you think of how long a season is. You, you know, keep everybody healthy. Keep a rotation as intact as you possibly can. That's big. Three two struck him out. Strikeout number seven and the Pirates gone in order. And Homer Bailey right now working on a no no. We're through five at PNC Park. A couple of good catches. Of course, yesterday, Travis Snyder, highway robbery, taking one away from Baxter. Here's Brandon Phelps back in 2003 on the 21st of June. Brian Giles, left field corner. The high. He pulls it back. How do you like that? Coors Light freeze cam brought to you by Frostbrook Coors Light. Right down there in that corner. That's wow. where Giles took it away. How about those two catches? I mean, how are you going to choose between them? They're both just spectacular. The timing, they're back toward the playing field and getting that kind of height, keeping the glove where he needed to. And just the fabulous catches. The guy at the plate, he remembers it. He's the one who hit it. <laughs> so Phillips now red. Is one for two, single and scored in the first inning, grounded the third in the third, and he takes strike one from AJ. And AJ doing just fine, gave up the run in the first inning, zeros since then, but Mr. Bailey has been putting up better zeros. Keep it going, AJ. We've seen so many times guys with spectacular games going, and all of a sudden, uh, if you keep pace with them to a certain degree, it can turn around. See what happened. Well, again, AJ has done a good job keeping him in the game. Just the rough first. He had a bases loaded, no out situation. Reds only scored one run. Jay Bruce heading into the inning ending double play. And Homer Bailey throwing a no hitter right now through five innings. One swing of the bat could tie it. So the Pirates still very much in this one despite not having a hit. You know, they, they, 
you know, it wouldn't be all, all that bad to make a video of watching A.J. Burnett in a situation like that. Bases loaded, nobody out. Top of the first inning. Hadn't even gotten into the game. You can see him in a non-panic mode, walking around the mound in that jam with people all around him and getting out of the inning with one run being scored. I mean, that's that's a perfect example of damage control and not letting things get away. Alvarez throws out Phillips. There's one man out. Phillips is one for three. What's that? Since that first inning, what he has faced one over the minimum. Got help with a double play and then a Guess they didn't call it a caught stealing, but anyway, Roland was out at second base for whatever reason. Trying to advance on a wild pitch. That would be whatever. Okay, that's the whatever category. Yeah. Zach Kozard, nothing in one. Shortstop is two for two tonight. Their base hits. Oh, one pitch from Burnett. Round ball to short. Barnes the leaping throw. And there are two men out. So the ground ball out, helping AJ Burnett. Nick Barnes getting a few of them tonight his way. Those aren't out for the first time. He's two for three. But since that first inning, where the Reds got the run, the Reds have only sent more than three men to the plate. One time. That was in the third inning. They sent three men to the plate in the second, fourth, fifth, and two so far in the sixth. One and out of Votto. Votto's 0 for 1 with a walk. Down the left field side and a fair ball and a base hit. And Votto will stop at first. Presley quickly gets the ball back onto the infield. Two out single for Votto. He's one for two. Votto going to the opposite field. Just going with the pitch. That's what, that's what good hitters do. So Joey Votto reaches with two men out. The batter will be Todd Frazier, the left fielder. Frazier takes ball one low. And AJ, I think, throwing right, maybe his 80th pitch right in that neighborhood after throwing 24 in the first inning. He has been quite efficient. This will be number 80 coming up. With that kind of start, you put a lid on the sixth inning, throwing 80 pitches, that's pretty darn good. That's going to happen. Round ball to first, and Garrett Jones smothers it. Steps on the bag, retires Frazier. And a 10 pitch inning for AJ.
Yes, I'm Tim Neverett on a crisp autumn evening here at PNC Park. Final homestand of the year. And the first of a three game series with the Cincinnati Reds, the Atlanta Braves, to come in to finish up the season Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday afternoon. You go to Root Sports E Connect. You can receive weekly updates on your favorite teams and programs by joining our Root Sports E Connect. Sign up today. Start receiving exclusive team information, programming updates, special giveaways, and much more right to your inbox. Visit RootSports.com today to join. That's the place to be out know, of the Budweiser Bow Tie Bar. It's warm near the heater. Yep, any fireworks display. And a great place to watch the game, great place to bring your groups out, your friends, your family, and if you just want to go out there one night when you're here, be our guest. This is becoming a story for Homer Bailey. And that one is hit to Votto, flips to Bailey, and he's got the out. Nice looking defensive play on the ball that had a lot of English on it, so Votto was able to stay with it. Get the ball over the pitcher, and Bailey once again getting over there doing his job. A lot of spin on that ball. Good play by Joey Votto, and not a panic feed. Steady feed over. You know, they got the catcher running. Goes three and one, but it's a better play than that. If this continues, they'll look it back at that kind of play. Not that it was spectacular, but it was solid. Let's see if AJ can break the spell. Get this guy throwing some pitches from the stretch. One's outside. Reporting, they'll be reporting this situation all around Major League Baseball. It starts after the fifth, starts to escalate if he continues it here in the sixth. Homer Bailey has one career shutout. Guess who it's against a couple of years ago? Middle of May, shut out the Pittsburgh Pirates. Tidy pitch count. And he's got AJ in a bad way. Career high in strikeouts is 10. He's got seven so far. And leg up perhaps on number eight. Burnett down to Votto. Another long toss to Bailey covering. Unnecessary, but he made it anyway. And there are two men out of the Pirate Sixth. Iron City Beer presents Sky Blast, featuring Zambelli Fireworks and Lifehouse live in concert tomorrow after the Bucks host the Reds at 7:05. If you already have your tickets to the game, you can upgrade your experience by purchasing passes to watch the show from the field. For tickets, go to Pirates.com/field. A great show tomorrow night here at PNC Park. Sky Blast. Lifehouse, Buckos and Reds. Alex Presley with two men out and nobody on. Pirates have had one base runner. It was in the third inning when Barmas reached on an error by Scott Rowland. Homer Bailey off to one of his finest starts. One ball and no strikes to count. And there has to come a point in the dugout, Steve, from the team that's being no hit, where the players are saying, okay, who's going to do it? Who's going to break it up? Yeah, and, and let's do it soon. Although there's not any urgency, I mean, the ball game is not in such a, a dire situation that uh, you have to press, but you kind of do anyway. <laughs> Two balls, one strike. Alex Presley facing Homer Bailey in the Pirates' sixth. Two and two. Presley with an impressive home run yesterday at City Field, hit it out to right in the ninth. 
And unfortunately for the Pirates, there was only one on. They needed two on. They ended up falling a run short, six to five to the Mets. You're right. Nothing cheap about it. A lot of carry. Occasionally, he just shows excellent pop. Two two pitch. It's up high, and the count is full. Three balls and two strikes. Jordy Mercer on deck. It really gets exciting for everyone. Of course, the, the pitcher out there in the middle, he's the one that has to handle the biggest part of all this. Broken bat roller. And Phillips will throw him out. Another one, two, three inning for Homer Bailey and the Reds. The Pirates set down in order, took Homer just 12 pitches to retire the punts. Time on Root Sports. Tune in for an exclusive preview of the Mountaineers game against Baylor and get an in depth look at their 2012 season in the Big 12. It's all part of Wild and Wonderful Sports and it starts this Saturday at 11 a.m. on Root Sports. DJ, that's a, that's a big sign. AJ has pitched well tonight. Homer Bailey has pitched better. AJ giving up the first inning run. That's been it. 1 0 pitch. And Bruce taps this right in front of home plate. Fair ball. Barajas gets the easy out. Won't get any easier right there. <laughs> right out in front. Just barely creeping into fair territory. It's a four inch fair ball right yep. there. Home plate is in fair territory. That ball starting back of home plate. Come on, get out there. Is it laying on home plate? Just yeah, it is actually. And AJ pitching extremely well. We talked about his win last time out against the Houston Astros and uh, breaking a four-game losing streak, but he pitched extremely well in several of those starts previous to the Houston win. That win total of 16 could very easily be 18. Ball on a strike to Scott Rowland. Himself. And that's a one ball, two strike count. 
One out, nobody on for Cincinnati. Top half of the seventh inning. Who's going to get the first pirate hit tonight? One, two to Roland. Way outside. Two balls and two strikes. Back in 1997, Scott Rowland, unanimous choice for rookie of the year with the Phillies. Two two. Yes, Got a look at strike three called and down on strikes goes Roland. Got to get this guy some runs. He is pitching so well tonight. AJ Burnett, start number thirty. AGH can following that ball in for the call third strike. Rod holding it right there. You can see the right arm of Ed Hickox going up for the strikeout. Center fielder Drew Stubbs waits the 0 1 pick. One ball, one strike. Stubbs is 0 for 2. Stubbs have been primarily a top of the order guy. Right now he's hitting down toward the bottom with his 218 average, now down to 217. And the pension for the strikeout as well. One and two. Hovering around that 160 mark. Strikeouts for the year. Usually don't have that combination. A guy with great speed striking out that much. Usually those kind of contact type of guys. He's got a lot of steals and a lot of strikeouts. Looks like he's got the trigger ready. Every pitch that's delivered yeah, to him. Wants to pull it. Turn it loose. Turn it loose. Rip it and rip it. Two balls and two strikes. And down on strikes goes Drew Stubbs. Another one, two, three inning. Twelve pitches for A.J. Burnett. He's been very effective. We've reached the seventh inning stretch, and it is presented by Northwood Realty Services. The Reds with a one nothing lead. For the seventh inning stretch, we invite you now to stand, follow the bouncing Eaton Park smiley cookie, and join everyone watching at home on Root Sports as we sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game.
had the seventh inning stretch and it's my pleasure in the Hall of Fame club to welcome a pirate great 1979 world champion a base stealing wonder Omar Marino. What's it like to be back? Well, very happy to be back here in Pittsburgh. You know Pittsburgh for me like like in my second country. You know very I feel happy to meet people like, you know we play for here for a long time. So I feel like I'm a, like I feel like I, I feel at like home right now. Does 1979 feel like a long time ago, or does it seem like yesterday? It was a long time, yes. <laughs> it was a long, long time, almost 30 years. What do you think of Kent Tukalvi? Do you remember Teak? Yeah. Was, was they still living here in Pittsburgh? We're going to do, we're going to do a post game show right after the game with oh, yeah. Teak. Oh, tell us a hello. I hear a word for him. <laughs> yeah, very excited to be here. And what about Bob Walk? I guess he he faced you. You were his first major league batter that he ever faced. Do you remember facing Bob Walk? Yeah, when he used to play with Philadelphia. Yeah, I remember Bob. Yeah, I remember. When he was, him and Steve Carton, Christians and all those guys. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Now, when, when you watch the game today, is there anyone that plays the game that, that reminds you of, of yourself when you played? Does anyone out there play like you did? Yeah, yeah. The guy that plays in the field, they got another kid uh, uh, named Martes. Martes? Martes yeah. from Dominican. Charlie Marte and oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Andrew him. McCutcheon. Yeah, yeah a I couple saw, of pretty good ones. Yeah, I saw him play in Dominican Republic. I like him. I think he's going to be a good ball player. It is so good to see you, Armor. Welcome back, and uh, thanks so much for the time. You're welcome. Thank you very right. much. Omar Moreno, one of the all-time greats, the antelope, as we used to call him. Eight seasons with the Buccos. Looks like he could still play. Good guy, Omar Moreno. 412 steals. That's impressive. Great shape. And he was impressed with Stanley Martin. Said he saw him play in the Dominican Republic. Really likes him. Said he reminds him of himself. Yeah. Good company. Yes, sir. Hope Stanley Marte can become the kind of player that Omar Moreno was. Andrew McCutcheon looking for a hit. Two balls and no strikes. And by the way, Homer Bailey has never taken a no hitter this deep into a ball game in his career. He's got this one going with one out in the seventh inning. Andrew McCutcheon awaits the 2 0. Three balls and no strikes. McCutcheon has been in a little bit of a mini slump, hasn't had a hit in his last three games. And is still chasing that batting title in the National League. And wouldn't it be nice for him to get a hit here, break up the no no? and. Got to add to his batting average, chasing Buster Posey. Bailey has pitched him extremely well. First two at bats. And walked him. So Andrew McCutcheon will be the second Pirate base runner. He represents the tying run. If you think these guys get here right before the games, no, they do not. Andrew McCutcheon was here very early today. He was with C.J. Wright, the Make a Wish Foundation. C.J. wanted to hang around with Kutch and get a chance to play with him. And Got a chance to take some batting practice. Kutch delivering the pitches, and then he went all the way around and head first slide right into home plate for the run. Wonderful, wonderful thing. I had to talk to, uh, I had a chance to talk to CJ because we ran into CJ out in Johnstown during the caravan. He had a chance to meet Andrew McCutcheon, and just uh, his eyes just absolutely big around his hero. And Chance to spend some time with Ben Hurdle and playing the first pitch, playing some catch, I guess, earlier. He had some good movement on that, didn't he? Yep. It's, a, it's, a, it's just a wonderful thing. Wonderful thing. A lot of things people don't get to see, too, that Andrew McCutcheon does. He goes to schools and visits with a lot of kids. People have to understand, too, that Make a Wish is not just for terminally ill. Children. It's for children with life threatening illnesses. McCutcheon takes off for second base and he is in with a stolen base. Number 20. Number 20. That's big. Another plateau. Filling out the package, the season package for Andrew McCutcheon. Off to the races. Good jump. Gets in underneath the tag. A good throw by Hannigan, but. He was able to beat the wrap. Just a straight steal and McCutcheon swiping back number 20 and now the tying run in scoring position. Pirates still without a hit. Here, why don't you just hit it over the fence and take care of that. Jump start this crowd. What a great crowd it is on a Friday night. A cool Friday night.
Stretch by Bailey. Looks back at McCutcheon. Now McCutcheon breaks for third. Throw down there, and he's out. Went to the well one too many times. And McCutcheon thrown out, trying to sneak third base. Hannigan gets the advantage of not having a right hand batter up and throws a bullet to Scott Rowland. Veteran puts the tag on. Wow. Look how close that was. Yep. See, you always have that element of the gray area when the tag is applied up on the body, away from the foot that's making contact with the base. Well, two men out on a two ball, one strike count to Jones. Rowland put the tag where it needed to be. And he tags him up on the leg, as you say, tags him higher. McCutcheon's probably safe. And he almost tagged him too high because that foot looked like it might have been in before the tag was applied up higher. Jones hits one in the air to right field and deep Bruce on the track, and he'll make the catch. And the Pirates are hitless after seven innings. Homer Bailey, the man of the hour for Cincinnati. Game break. Check in on the Nationals. Cardinals bottom of the first. Cardinals already leading four to one. Peter Cosma, a bloop single to center off Edwin Jackson. Yadier Molina comes across to score. Cards put up a five spot in the first, leading five to one over the Nationals. And here on the North Shore, one nothing Cincinnati. Six hits for the Reds. Nothing. For the Pirates and Andrew McCutcheon, first Pirate since Jason Bay in 2005 to have 30 home runs and at least 20 stolen bases in a season. Going after his 21st, he was thrown out trying to swipe third. Well, the Reds did everything perfectly. Quick throw by Hannigan, tagged by Rowan, so being on the money. How far can we slow this thing down? Rowan's glove. Uh, he might have grazed the ankle area as he went by. And that is slowing it down. But the glove might have been behind the. If it's, if it's behind the foot, then he tags him high, too high, and he might have been safe. Close call. Pirates didn't get it. Not a big argument. And there is the man of the hour. Everybody in baseball knows what's going on in Pittsburgh right now. Homer Bailey, with a no hitter through seven. A skinny one nothing lead. <laughs> AJ Burnett has been in the shadows pitching beautifully. One run on six hits. And AJ worked himself into a bases loaded no out jam on the first inning, got out of it, just surrendering the one run on a sacrifice fly by Todd Frazier, scoring Brandon Phillips. It has been nothing since for the Reds, and the Pirates have been stymied by Homer Bailey tonight. 
Well, you can only control what is your responsibility. AJ Burnett is taking his responsibility very seriously and pitching a terrific game. Pitch to Hannigan is in for a strike. Three and one the count. Reds have hit into two inning ending double plays tonight as well. Hannigan hit into one of them in the second. AJ Burnett ready to deal the 3 1 pitch. In the air to left field and deep hustling after it is Alex Presley and in front of the north side notch will make the catch. And Hannigan is out. Bring the whole family to cheer on the Bucks this Sunday. They'll host the Reds again at 135 and all fans take home a Pirates fleece blanket. Thanks to Highmark. Bucks come early for a pregame ceremony. Honoring the 40th anniversary of Roberto Clemente's 3,000th hit. For tickets, visit Pirates.com. We'll be out here Sunday afternoon for that. Looking forward to being a part of that uh, Clemente celebration with Roberto's family. Looking forward to seeing Vera. 1-0 pitch to Homer. Still a great memory of him standing on second base, doffing his cap after doubling off John Matlack. Hit number 3,000. He would finish with exactly 3,000 hits. Well, so they're going to let Bailey hit. He goes, hmm. <laughs> Well, he's been doing an okay job on the hills, dude. Yeah, right. Yeah, he, he looks surprised. Hey, you never know these there. days. You never know. <laughs> Guys get taken out all, all over count? the place. You think they're going to take him out on a pitch count tonight? I don't think so. The Reds are not ready to shut down Homer Bailey. 2 1. If I'm not mistaken, there have been instances of guys that have not given up a hit and have been taken out of Major League Baseball games. I just think of the combined no hitter the Pirates put together. What was that no hitter this year with the, the Angels or somebody had six different six pitches? different uh, the Mariners Mariners. Yeah. There's the tail of the numbers right there. Jordy Mercer will handle the Homer Bailey ground ball. Out number two. Two down to the top of the eighth inning Brandon Phillips the hitter. We're pulling all all the stops out. First of all, we're showing the information up on the scoreboard. That's one way of doing. It. I think maybe the way those Penguins were swinging the bat during batting practice this afternoon, we might want to get some of those guys in here. To, I think we'd rather have them uh, get into practice and get all that yeah. nonsense straightened out. I think of all the Penguins, Matt Cook had the best swing. Okay. I want to see him up at Consol uh, Center. 102 pitches for Burnett as he faces Phillips in the eighth. Pirates with some bullpen activity. The lefty is Watson, the right hander Hughes. 1 0 to Phillips. Two balls and no strikes. Phillips Singleton has scored the game's only run. One for three tonight for the second baseman for Cincinnati. AJ Burnett with one complete game. It was the brilliant game against the Cubs, the one hitter. Speaking of low hit games. Fastball still up over 91 for the veteran. Two balls and one strike to Brandon Phillips. Ground ball left side. Barman's from the hole. Long throw. Not going to get it. Jones unable to scoop it up. Good start to the play. Not so good finish. Well, Bonas does a good job of getting the ball deep in the hole and a long throw on the half. You see how far Clint goes. And the swipe by Garrett Jones, and it, you have that one shot of 
kind of doing the Ole sweep. It doesn't work out. And they rule a base hit. Ray Searage will make his first visit to the mound, and it comes with two outs in the top of the eighth inning. Tim had a chance to spend a little time with the longtime Pittsburgh sports author Jim O'Brien this morning. He's got a new book coming out, The Immaculate Reflections, touching on 50 years of sports in the Pittsburgh area. Jim has produced many sports books. It's coming out in the middle of October. Accurate reflections by Jim O'Brien. AJ Burnett is doing a, a great job, but he is in the shadow of a no-hit game by Homer Bailey. And the pitch from Burnett. Line drive right at Barmus for out number three. No runs to hit a man left. To the bottom of the eighth we go. The Pirates looking to break up the no hitter. Brilliant. But in the bottom of the first, when he went out to pitch his first inning, where was Ryan Hannigan? They scored a run in the top of the first. Now Homer Bailey's going to start his night. Hey, you got somebody up there? I need to get loose. I might be pitching a no hitter tonight. Come on, give me something to give me somebody to throw to. So Ryan Hannigan got out there, and the rest is history so far. Well, Hannigan's spot in the order was three hitters away. It wasn't like he was on deck or yeah. anything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Deanna Navarro jumps out there. <laughs> I'll go out and catch it. That's how the night began. Hannigan a little tardy, but it's been brilliant since. Bailey's been on time all night. Travis Snyder, pinch hitter, leads off and hits this one to left field, but Frazier is there. One out. And by the way, one out in the ninth of this no hit bid in front of 34,796 with a chance to watch history. What a brilliant, brilliant turnout. And this ball is just lined up, comfortably caught in left field. No problem there. That was coming off that brilliant catch. Wanted to. Base hit, get the power started here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Pedro Alvarez will take his turn. I'll tip into the glove of Hannigan for a strike. Alvarez has struck out twice. 91 pitches. 
and he has gotten a lot of comfortable outs. And just four or five balls hit to the outfield. Strike two to Pedro. By the way, just going back, 34,796. What a testimonial to the Pittsburgh Pirate baseball fans in this city on a Friday night. A lot of things going on around the area with high school football. And that's wonderful, but that that is a terrific, terrific testimonial to these baseball fans. One and two to Alvarez. Well, the ones that came out tonight have certainly seen a pitching performance on both sides. But Bailey upstaging the Pirates tonight. And Alvarez right to roll. How about they have the shift? There's one defensive player between second and third. It is Scott Rowland, and the ball is hit gently to him. That's that's when you're going good. One person on that side of the infield. Just one. And it's just kind of a little comfortable shot to Scott Rowland. Why do they have somebody there? Wondering the same thing, Pedro, but that's the way they line it up and they do the shift. Pirates will pinch hit for Clint Barmas. Jeff Clement will come out of the dugout to hit against Homer Bailey. They want the left hand bat. Homer Bailey is four outs away from doing something that hasn't been done to the Pirates in 41 years. Oh, I remember that. Steve was there. 01 pitch in the dirt. August 14th. You remember that? 1971? Yep. You want the rest of the details? Mr. Bob Gibson. An 11 to nothing Cardinals win, and Gibson pitched a no hitter. That's the last time the Pirates have been no hit. Same year they won the world title. One ball and two strikes. Trying to work the percentage as a left hand bat against Homer Bailey as opposed to Clint Barmas. But he is in the hole one and two, and Homer Bailey is just dealing. Be interesting to see what the dugout, the Cincinnati dugout, is like if he gets this third out in the eighth inning. One ball, two strikes. Inside the Jeff, and it's two and two. I remember being up in Montreal when Jeff Fasaro took a no hitter in the ninth inning against the Pittsburgh Pirates and got a base hit in the top of the ninth inning. This is a special night for that young man right there and he's working hard to contain his emotions. I'm sure. It's not easy Two two. And Homer Bailey right to the glove right exactly to the glove. He is three outs away. From his first career no hitter.
Root Sports is brought to you by Jeep. Now get a great deal on a legendary Jeep vehicle at the Jeep Summer Clearance Event by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. And by Levin Furniture and the all-new Levin Mattress Stores. For a great deal on a new bed, shop Levin's. Let's go box. Hey, Sean Road ahead. Tomorrow, Mike Leake faces Kyle McPherson. McPherson looking for his first major league win. And then on Sunday, Cy Young candidate Johnny Cueto goes for win number 20 against Wandy Rodriguez. There it is. Read them and weep. No runs, no hits, no errors. Changes for the Pirates. Travis Snyder remains in the game, plays right field. Tony Watson is the new pitcher facing Joey Votto in a one nothing game top of the ninth inning. Jordy Mercer moves from second base over to shortstop and the new second baseman is Chase Darno. Consider this you got a chance for a no hitter and then the next night a guy for a chance for his 20th win. Dickey yesterday got his 20th. A lot of stuff. They have a lot of, a lot of pitching. I mean, Watson on the mound as he relieves A.J. Burnett, who was just fine. In fact, he was better than fine. Eight innings, a run on seven hits. He walked a batter and struck out five. Certainly pitching well enough to win, but he's not going to win it. No balls, two strikes. Watson delivers. Outside for a ball to Joey Votto. Joey Votto waiting for the one two. Everybody else waiting for the bottom of the ninth. Two balls and two strikes. We welcome anybody joining us no matter where they are. And they if tuning not, in for this one. If they're not here now they'll be here. In the bottom of the ninth. We're that close to history. Two balls and two strikes. And that one is low. Go from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. Tony Watson, as usual, trying to massage that outside corner to a left hand batter. That's what he's been doing all summer. He's been doing a good job of it. Payoff pitch to Votto. On the left field line and out of play. Ryan Hannigan and oh, how important is the catcher, Steve, when it comes to a no hitter? Well, you know the Eagles song, the heat is on. It's on a lot of people. The catcher, the pit, primarily the pitcher, but then the catcher, home plate umpire, everybody in defensively. Homer Bailey not on the bench. He's probably pacing and trying to keep himself together emotionally. Darno fields and fires to first, and he's got Votto. Time for the Coors Light Cold Hard Blast. Todd Frazier yesterday for the Cincinnati Reds against the Milwaukee Brewers just hammered one out to center field at Great American Ballpark. Frazier hitting his 19th of the season. Cold Hard Blast brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light. A one out. Top of the ninth inning as Votto grounded out to Darno at second. Jay Bruce on deck. He'll follow Frazier. Frazier tonight 0 for 2. He's going to sacrifice fly. He's driven in the game's only run, scoring Brandon Phillips from third base in the first inning. One pitch. Well, back. This is like the pregame stretch now. Everybody waiting for the bottom of the ninth inning. This is a one out, nobody on, but uh, this is just tension building. The 
Spire running the ball club. He's seen no hitters. Probably a good chance that Chris has been part of a team that has been no hit, been part of a team that has no hit the opponent. I've been around that long. You've seen it all. In the air to left center. Drifting over is Presley. Two gone in the night. Well, the Pirates have come close to being no hit twice this year. Once in Detroit, Justin Verlander took one into the ninth. And Matt Kane of San Francisco, opening day for the Giants back in April, gave up a sixth inning single to James McDonald, the pitcher. His opposite number that day. Little did he know that he would be perfect before that hit and perfect after that hit. Josh Harrison broke up the one against Verlander. And this one's crushed. Deep. And foul. Jay Bruce got in front of that. He'll take you back. May 18th in Detroit at Comerica Park. Justin Verlander's got the no-no going. One out of the night. And reaching for it was Harrison, and he spoiled it for Verlander. This one's popped up. Playable for Barajas. Hey, get ready, folks. And we are going to the bottom of the ninth inning. Can the Pirates break it up? Homer Bailey takes a no-hitter into the bottom of the ninth in Pittsburgh. Tonight, eight innings of no hit baseball. He is going into a place he's never been before, taking a no hitter into the ninth inning. As the Pirates try to break it up here in the bottom half of the ninth inning, trailing just one to nothing, but it's been the Homer Bailey show from the first inning all the way through the eighth tonight. He has been hitting his spots all night long. His line. One change for the Reds. New left fielder Chris Heisey replacing Fraser. Everybody on their toes. There's adrenaline everywhere, primarily with number 34. But these players on defense for the Reds, they are ready. And how about youngster Brock Holt coming to the plate in this situation? Started the year in double A in Altoona. Spent a little bit of time in AAA in Indianapolis and has had very little big league time, but hitting 306 in 20 games. Contact hitter. Harnessing the adrenaline, the excitement, the emotions. Homer Bailey. In the most exciting situation a pitcher can be in from Little League on up to the big leagues, and here he is. Probably not even dreamed of doing this. Brock Holt fouls it off and he is down on the count of ball and two strikes. 
And if you're thinking about Homer Bailey, this is a very good sign. He comes out in the ninth inning. He is ahead in the count. He has got everything under control to this point. One and two to Brock Holt. Wants the fastball inside. Look at Hannigan. And he got him. Chases upstairs. And Homer Bailey is two outs away. The last no hitter for the Cincinnati Reds, September 16th, 1988. It was a perfect game. Tom Browning, after a long rain delay, beat Tim Belcher. Belcher pitched a complete game on the other side. No walks, seven strikeouts. Time of the game, an hour and 51 minutes. Jim Quick was the home plate umpire in that one. Incidentally, Barry Larkin scored that game's only run. And since 1940, Tom Seaver had one, Jim Maloney, George Culver, and Maloney another one in 1965. Jim Maloney threw as hard as anybody you'd want to face back in the day, middle 60s. Had not had a no hitter on the road since 1968. Maloney in the shadow of guys like Seaver, or like uh, Koufax and Drysdale, not a big name, but Jim Maloney could flat bring it. Michael McHenry he is tied a, st a career strikeout high by the way along the way here. Ten. What is going through the mind of Homer Bailey right now? Well for his sake hopefully blank. McHenry fouls it off to the right. I only mean blank in the fact that he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to think about the enormity of the moment. Shouldn't say blank because he still needs to make pitches. Now the fielder's saying, "Hit it to me." I know the guy at third base does. The guy at second base does. Yeah, yeah, they, they want to make a play. Those aren't the rookie. Yeah. First time he's been in this situation. Well, the, the butterflies are there for everybody. Strike two to McHenry. There's adrenaline right now, 92 miles an hour. Uh, there's and there, how about this? There's a pitcher out there and there's no concern about a pitch count in the ninth inning. Imagine that they are they are ready. You know, there's there's no casual standing around waiting for this game to end. It's one nothing and there's a no hitter. He wants it upstairs and he's gotten a couple swings when Hannigan has gone upstairs with the glove. He has hit, has hit his spots tremendously tonight. Up the ladder. One, two. Still wanted upstairs. Homer Bailey in uncharted waters. And now you wonder if Hannigan will come downstairs. They've been working McHenry upstairs, upstairs, upstairs. They got him looking up that way. Will they go down? They've got the advantage of the count, one and two. He's very much in the hands of his catcher right now. Up and in. I would say so. McHenry falling down after the tower was buzzed. Two balls and two strikes to Michael. Well, if he wants to set up the breaking ball down in the way, he's just done it. I can't stand this. I've got to stand up. Here's the breaking ball missing. Full a special count to thing, McHenry. A special thing to watch. Well, Homer Bailey on top of the hill waiting to deliver the payoff pitch to the Pirates backup catcher tonight. Pop back and out of play. Homer Bailey's not thinking about it right now, but all eyes in Major League Baseball on him, watching everything he does here in the bottom of the ninth inning, hoping to complete this no hitter. Nobody on, one out, three balls, and two strikes to McHenry. This was the 111th pitch of the night for Homer Bailey. And McHenry. Pops it up, shallow left. And Heisley will take it. Yep. Not that it was a difficult play, but 
Yeah, you make defensive replacements because you think your guy has a better glove out there. Homer Bailey is one out away. From pitching the seventh no hitter this season in Major League Baseball. Look at Chris Fire. Yep, he's just enjoying the moment. He's soaking it in. He can do that as the manager. The guys out there in fair territory cannot yet. And Dusty okay. Baker, who has been in the hospital, has been a little ill, watching this one from afar, and certainly you think Dusty's smiling hard right now. Keep your eyes on number 34. Don't take your eyes off him. The last hole for the Pirates tonight is Alex Presley. He takes ball one. Containing the emotions. I did a lot of pitching, but uh, I never got in this kind of situation. No hitter with one more out to get. Presley hit a home run in the ninth against the Mets yesterday afternoon at City Field. 1 0 pitch. One and one. Presley looking for the fastball, getting it just a little bit out in front. Well, Steve, since the Pirates were no hit in '71, there's only been two teams with longer streaks: the Reds and the Cubs. Longer streaks where they've been no hit. And Bailey now two strikes away, perhaps. Or perhaps one pitch could be. Here is the 1 1 to Presley. Two balls and a strike. But if he wanted to really rear back now, he could get it up to 96 miles an hour with the adrenaline package going here in the bottom of the night. Fans on their feet, they know what's happening. 34,000 plus on hand. Two balls and a strike to Presley. He'll step out. And many of these folks have never seen this before in person. And Alex Presley, uh, not wrong to do this. Step out. Sweat him a little bit. No hitter on the line for Homer Bailey. Two outs in the bottom of the ninth. The two ball, one strike pitch. And Presley pops it up. This is going to do it. Phillips is back, and Homer Bailey has pitched a no-hitter at PNC Park in Pittsburgh. The Reds win it one nothing. Homer Bailey with a no-no. The 26 year old from LaGrange, Texas. Well, he sure does like pitching against the Pirates. Three complete games now in his career. Two of them previous to tonight, and tonight he puts the crossing on the cake. What a special night. A night that he will never forget the rest of his life. And for the first time in 41 seasons, the Pirates are no hit. Homer Bailey pitches the seventh no hitter in Major League Baseball this year. He no hits the Pirates for the eighth time in franchise history. And the first since Bob Gibson did it in 1971. That is so special. So special. He and his catcher. They'll get together when the dust settles. Ryan Hannigan will never forget this either. Homer Bailey, Ryan Hannigan. What a battery tonight. Homer Bailey making some baseball history tonight. This is how he did it. Do I dare think it? Yes, I do dare think it. And it's over. It's never going away. It's in the books. And as Marty Brenner would say, this one belongs to the Reds.
Elation. Elation. <laughs> the dousing. <laughs> That's for it. Why you watch the game? That's why you watch the game of baseball for those kind of moments. The release, the un unbelievable release after that ball is caught. Well, the Cincinnati Reds pick up their 95th win of the National League Central Division champions. Put a little icing on their cake this year. A late season no hitter twirled by Homer Bailey. On a cool night in Pittsburgh. And Homer Bailey a night to remember. All of Cincinnati is smiling and all of baseball marveling at the work of Homer Bailey tonight. The Pirates had just two base runners. Clint Parmas reached on an error by Scott Rowland in the third inning. Andrew McCutcheon walked in the seventh, stole second, tried to swipe third and was thrown out there by catcher Ryan Hannigan. As Bailey picks up his first career no hitter. One nothing the final score. That's it from up here. Let's send it down to the boys in section 103. Paul Alexander and Kent Tacovi who will have plenty more on this one. All right, Tim, thank you very much. And obviously, uh, still a rather ecstatic Homer Bailey. There's only one first ever and a no-hitter. And you can just tell early on he was on. Every time the catcher moved the glove, that's where the ball went. And Tiki could tell early on he had his yeah, good stuff. Especially you know, with Bailey, because of the fact that when he has trouble normally in his location, he was so good tonight, right from the beginning of being able to get the ball where he wanted to. Saw at the end of the game, still had enough strength to elevate the ball, get the strikes upstairs, the breaking ball, and again, Hennigan very solid, very little movement at all in his glove all night long. He went up, he went down, he went in, he went out. He just had absolute control. Hit 94 on the gun, so when that breaking ball snaps up like it was, obviously, this guy was going to be a tough guy to hit. He was going to be a tough guy to hit, and really one of the telltales is in the last inning. He still had enough to throw that high fastball and get it by the hitters. You know, the ones that they did hit, they were just fighting to try to get up to it. Homer Bailey was good in the middle, or excuse me, good in the beginning, good in the middle, and great at the end. He does strike out 10 on the night as the Reds beat the Pirates by the score of one to nothing. We're just getting started. We'll break it all down straight ahead. We will have everything for you right here on Root Sports. Stick around. <laughs> 